What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we are checking out the Snaptain SP500. It is a foldable 1080p 5G Wi-Fi FPV camera GPS RC quadcopter ready to fly. So let's open up the box and check it out. All right, so let's take a closer look at the quadcopter looking pretty nice, all folded up. Now it comes with foldable arms, but the props are not foldable. And looking on the top of the canopy, we have a push button power on and off switch. And in the front, we got a couple of LED lights looking like eyes and the 5G 1080p Wi-Fi FPV camera tilt adjustable manually to about 40 degrees and straight up horizon and on the bottom we got a couple of antennas and a hole it is looking like it is for a optical flow sensor camera but it did not come with one however it did come with a built-in dvr in which i put a micro sd card in here so you are able to record photos and videos directly into the micro sd card as well as the wi-fi phone app and the wi-fi phone app is called the snapchain nova app free downloadable app in the app store so go ahead and check it out and in the rear we got the battery bay and the battery that we are provided with is a lithium ion 1000 milliamp 7.4 volt battery supposed to be good for about 15 minutes of flight time and charge it up utilizing this micro usb port and they do provide you with the charge cable usb to micro usb and while you are charging the green light blinks and once you are done charging the green light becomes solid now they provide you with two of these charge cables and because they provide you with two batteries so you're going to get a total flight time of about 30 minutes but do rest in between the two batteries when you change it out now let's go ahead and fold out the arms it does click into place but it does not have a locking mechanism which is a good thing so when you do crash the arms will just fold in kind of like a crunch zone so that is really nice you don't compromise and break the hinge right so it is looking pretty nice once it's folded out and it kind of reminds me of the tianq visio drone the xs 809 because it's got the same kind of motor pod and the led light and we do have a little rubber footing to stick that landing and we do have a placeholder here right on the end of the motor pod in which you can remove it and place the prop guards it is just a minimalistic push-in prop guards and it just locks into place just like that and when you want to remove it just push down this little lever and it pulls right out and I do recommend if you are a beginner use the prop guards it will help you protect the props and in turn help you protect the motors as well I'm gonna fly it without it because it is a little bit less wind resistant without the prop guards so just push this thing back in here <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, so let's place the quadcopter on the table and take a look at what else we get in the box. So we get a full set of prop guards here and the two charge cable. And also we get another charge cable, another USB to micro USB charge cable. This one is a little bit smaller in size and that one is to charge up the remote control internal battery. It has like about a 350 milliamp size battery internally and there is the micro USB port to charge up your remote control as well which is really nice. Now it comes with an extra full set of props and a screwdriver and some of these end caps. These little end caps for the top of the props. I guess you lose those quite often because they give you about six or seven of those and another bag of screws here and of course the remote control and some documentation this one says you want a free gift and you want a free new product release join our loyalty program you can go ahead and do that and there's the instruction booklet so let's take a closer look at the remote control here now the remote control has a fold out hand grip and a flip out 
phone clip as well and it will take my iPhone 6 Plus without a case. So there's some LED light indicators and on the top there is the speed changing button. I do believe it has one, two, perhaps three speeds. We'll check it out. And on the right we have the photo video button. Short press it to take a photo, long press it to take a video on and off power switch. Uh, this button right over here is the headless mode. The one on the right is the return to home button, the smart return to home button. This is a GPS quadcopter. All right, so here's the one key to take off and one key to land. And this is the GPS on and off button. And if you long press the one key to take off and one key to land, it is also the emergency stop as well. Okay. There's a button right here, it says NS. This is to calibrate the compass. And here is a gyro figure on this button. So this here is to calibrate the gyros of the quadcopter. Now, so both sticks to the bottom and out will arm and disarm the motors. All right, so this thing's supposed to have about slightly over 200 meter control distance, as well as the 5G Wi-Fi distance is slightly over 200 meters as well. All right, so let's go for a little demo flight with the Snaptain SP500, the GPS drone. All right, let's get started with the demo flight of the Snaptain SP500, the GPS quadcopter. I got the battery inserted already and it locks into place. So let's go ahead and power it up. Hold down the power button for a couple seconds and we got some red LEDs in the front and the green LEDs in the rear. Let's go ahead and power up the remote. Automatic bind, you don't have to do that throttle up and down. Now, this has a dedicated compass calibration button and a dedicated gyro calibration button. So let's go ahead and calibrate the compass. Long hold the compass calibration button and we are good to go here. So the red lights in the front supposed to go solid once it is done horizontal calibration. So rotate the quark up the horizontally until the front LED lights turn solid red and it has done so. After that, nose down until the green light comes solid on the rear arms. So rotate it and there you go. Green light has turned on, but it is blinking. And the reason why it is blinking is because it is searching for the GPS satellite. So in it, we need to wait until the rear lights and the front lights go solid. And we have acquired all of the necessary GPS in which time it has done so. Let's go ahead and start up the phone app. That was pretty fast. Okay, we are in the settings and we are in the Wi-Fi section of the settings and we are being connected to the CSJ Wi-Fi network and we have done so. And here's the app. It is called the Snap Snaptain Nova app. So go ahead and hit that. And it is a phone app that I've downloaded to enlarge it and now it is able to fill up the screen on an iPad. And it says SP500. And we got the settings here. And let's see. No. Start up, reverse control, right hand mode. You can set that up. We also have the media icon, support icon, the start icon, and the tutorials icon. Let me go ahead and hit the start icon. And looks like we are in here. And we got Wi Fi FPV. Oh, the screen looks really nice. Yeah, it's got a pretty decent camera. The horizon is warping, so we got a nice, huge field of view. I believe it is about 110 or 120 degree field of view. So looking really, really nice. All right, so we have done the uh, calibration for the compass, but we haven't done the calibration for the gyro. So long press the gyro calibration button, and the lights start flashing and it has gone solid again. So we are good to go here. So let's go ahead and take some photos here. There's a photo icon. There you go. Snaptain Nova would like to add to your photos. You say, okay. Would like to access your photos. You say, okay. So this is the very first time I'm using this app here. All right, so let's check out and see if we can take a photo and video with the 
hard remote solo. Short press it, there you go. All right, long press it. And looks like we are taking a video. Yes, the video icon is flashing and there's a red counter as well. Let me press it again to turn it off because I want to take some photos, make our rounds and take some photos. So using the iPad here, so let's take some photos. Yeah, the camera is looking really nice. Wide angle field of view. Capture everything and no solar eclipse. And look at how far my car looks in the video. Very nice. Oh. Got to include that table. And one more photo. All right, so I got the micro SD card inserted. So let's take a look and see what we have taken so far. Here's the photos and videos. Am I screen recording? Nope, sorry about that. Now I'm screen recording. There we go, screen is recording. There we go. We got some photos and looks like we got that one video. All right, so the Wi-Fi phone app records the photos and the videos and hopefully we are recording the photos and videos into the micro SD card as well. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that video icon to start taking videos. And here's a settings. Let's see, flight parameter settings. I'm a beginner. No, I am not a beginner. So that is off. Flight distance set to 30 meters. I'm gonna hit it to 500. We have a 200 something meter distance, guys, not 500. It's just a phone app. Flight altitude, maximum 120 meters, I guess. Return altitude for the GPS return to home is set to 25. That seems right about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And it says set successfully. And look at that, my video stopped recording because I went into the settings. So I'm gonna hit it again. There you go. It is recording, but just to make sure, let me go back into the photo album and check out the video. See, there's three videos, one of which got stopped because I went out of the phone app. And there's a third video, so I know by hitting the icon on the Wi-Fi phone app, we are recording video as well. So let's leave the iPad on the table here. We'll come back to that in a little bit. And let's go ahead and check out the core functions of this GPS quadcopter. So there's a one key to take off and one key to land. Here's a GPS on and off switch. So you are able to fly this thing like indoors, for example, and turn off the GPS. Or if you want to fly it without the GPS position hold, you can do that as well. All right, so let's go and check it out. One key to take off. Nope, both sticks at the bottom and out. Arms the motors, do that again. This arms the motors. So let's go ahead and arm the motors first and one key to take off. There you go. Okay, that is the altitude, the designated default altitude that it comes to. And look at that. It is just holding in one spot. Nice position hold. L lower it down just a little bit. Let me go ahead and get it angry. Pull it and let go. There you go. Goes back to the position hold spot. Nice. Okay, forward pitching. I can see the LED lights. So pretty bright LEDs, and I can see the green LEDs on the rear arms, but the red LEDs are kind of faint. Probably very visible at night, but during the day out here, very hard to see. All right, so that was speed number one. Let's check out speed number two. Oh, and we have some pitch action. but still very mild and smooth in flight. And that is the full yaw. Nope, just two speeds. Okay, so I'm gonna just fall around in speed number two. So let's go ahead and bring it in and hit that one key to land. Go ahead and hit that one key to land. And we are able to redirect its path of its landing. And there you go right there now we have landed on the landing pad and 
we're going to take off from the landing pad so that is going to be registered as the new home point so when i hit the return to home button it will come back and land on the landing pad all right so arming the motors one key to take off help it out a little bit and let's check out the return to home pretty nice quad copter so far here's the return to home button so let's go ahead and press that some beeping turns around oh and it heads back like super fast okay hovers uh, I can see that that's not 25 meters in height like the phone app settings is oh check it out though it's gonna make it on the landing pad I didn't have to redirect it nice all right so that's the return to home and it continues to beep even though the motors have shut off so you need to press that button once again all right so let's go and check it out one more time here and I'm the motors okay hello nope it does not want to arm the motors nope okay something is wrong here so let's put it back on the table we got lights everything is good but it does not want to arm the motors there you go now it armed the motors maybe i wasn't doing it correctly now i don't want to start on the table here i want to start <laughs> taking off from the landing pad because that'll be the home point so both sticks at the bottom and yeah you you need to get it just right both sticks at the bottom and out but you need to do it exactly on the corners here there you go all right let's take off one more time and push it out i thought something was wrong with the quad cup and i was like what i was panicking out okay we're going to check out the fail safe return to home so i'm going to go ahead and turn off the remote control simulating loss of connection there you go turned off the remote control and check it out looks like it is not going to respond i do believe it is one of those gps quadcopters that needs to lose connectivity on the hard remote as well as the phone app okay so let's see if that is the case sometimes it does that so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and turn off the phone app. So I'm going to stop video recording first to save that video recording. And I'm going to go ahead and kill the app. And let's see if it comes back. Yeah, you need to kill the app as well. So it needs to lose connection with both the hard remote and the Wi-Fi phone app, which I'm not a big fan of because you're doing Wi-Fi FPV. I mean, you are out there taking a video and if you lose connectivity with your hard remote, you wanna have video captured all that long. You need to get out of the Wi-Fi phone app to have the fail-safe return to home activate it so that is kind of not the very best i still have connectivity here on the network so i need to restart the app okay so let's go ahead and hit start and it phases in okay so let me go ahead and hit that video icon again and we are recording a video so yeah i'm not a big fan of that but that is the behavior of this Snaptane SP500. Both sticks to the bottom and out. Oops, I need to turn on the remote as well. Okay, we are connected. And there you go. Now it is responding. Okay, one key to take off. All right, so we have a successful return to home and a successful fail-safe return to home. But remember, you need to disengage both the hard remote as well as the wi-fi phone app looks like we are in speed number one yeah so let's leave it at speed number one and check it out holding position no toilet bowl activity at all 
All right, so let's do some FPV here. Let me brace my iPad. Wow, but look at the uh, camera. It is looking really nice. Okay, so I'm going forward. Oh, this is a nice video quality. 5G, 1080p, Wi-Fi FPV. So, oops. Okay. I'm going forward and it seems to me like I hit a geofence. There's some kind of a geofence going on here guys. So I'm unable to traverse any further away and hopefully I'm not already in the low voltage. Okay. There's nothing else that I can set. So I'm already in the low first stage of low voltage. So I'm not able to check out how far I can go with this thing. So I believe it is 30 meters that I am able to go until until it hits that geofencing and it bounces back. Yeah, to prevent you from going any further out because the battery is low so we do have a geofencing so we are already in the first phase of low voltage return to home which was really quick so I'm only able to fly around within the 30 meter radius so let's go ahead and do some FPV because I do see that we have battery life and there you go there's only two bars left and once the uh, battery life on the quadcopter goes to one bar it will return to home so that will be the critical low voltage return to home or what I like to call the second stage of return to home so let's go ahead and fly around within the 30 meter radius But check out the uh, video and the FPV, it is really nice. So my first battery did not last very long. So I don't know if we're getting a 15 minute flight time and my video icon has stopped recording. So I'm not sure if I'm still recording or not. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit that video icon again. And now it's recording okay all right so not the very best Wi-Fi app, uh, app here because my video has stopped recording by itself But I do have the screen recording and there I am I've overshot myself and it has rotated beyond the amount of rotation that I wanted so so here we have a slight problem because I'm on the other side of the car so there is a slight interference issue here not an interference issue but the connectivity issue with the hard remote See, right now I have perfect control, but because I was on the other side of the car, yeah, the car was interfering is what it is. Okay, so pretty decent FPV and pretty decent camera, but the first phase of low voltage kicked in way too soon. I wasn't able to go beyond 30 meters at all with my very first battery and my very first flight so 30 meters is right about here <laughs> yep there you go 30 meters and we hit that geofencing all right so when it goes down to one bar of battery life remaining it will go into the second phase of low voltage return to home and if you are within 15 meters away from the remote control it will just come down and land itself but if you are between 15 and 30 meters then it will perform that return to home 
But so far, this thing is really nice. Speed number two. It's got a little bit more pitch. Little over rotating on speed number two is what I'm finding out here. Okay, I'm gonna go back down to speed number one because it's a little bit better for FPV purposes. All right, but we do have a very nice camera on board here. Take some nice video. So you wanna do that far away traversing up to 200 somewhat meters for, uh, in the first half of your battery life. Because when it gets down to about 50%, which is two bars remaining on the battery life indicator, because there's a total of four bars, you will enter into the low voltage. And that is a little bit too soon, in my opinion. That should give you a little bit more time to fly about. So half of the battery life, I am stuck inside of that 30 meter radius so hopefully they can fix that problem just by an update on the app wi-fi phone app put a little control setting on that so you can decide for yourself and we do have a very long period between the first phase and the second phase of low voltage so yeah that needs to be fixed I think all right we are still recording a video we'll do another little yaw spin here check out the scenery Okay, there I am. Pretty nice though, so far. Okay, full pitching in speed number one. Seems to be pretty decent with the camera angle at zero degrees. Smooth turns. turning yeah like I said there's a very long period between the first phase and the second phase of low voltage which is too long okay I hit the geofence Oop! I got a little car oh look at that the battery life indicator icon has turned red and without any beeping or anything it is making its way back home Without turning around, it just made its way back home. And, oh, it has kind of reset itself, sort of. And it is coming down. And it looks like it's going to come down pretty close to where it took off from. There you go. Landed almost right on top of the landing pad. All right, so there you go, guys. The test flight and review of the Snaptane SP500, the GPS quadcopter.